Thank you for your time. I'm fine through specialist Jonathan Curl. And today's lesson, we are going to discuss the inflation rate. There are several videos and tutorials that are available that discuss inflation in technical terms. However, I decided that I would like to explore this subject matter from the perspective of the impact on inflation for beginners, for those that do not understand uh, or are looking for a simpler understanding of the impact of inflation and what they need to do. Um, so today's lesson, again, is entitled Inflation Rate Explained for Dummies. And inflation is the phenomenon that causes a reduction in purchasing power. Purchasing power determines how many things you can buy for a certain amount of currency or money. Over time, inflation erodes your purchasing power if your currency is not growing at a rate that is equal to or greater than the rate of inflation. What that means is this. Typically, the rate of inflation hovers around 3%, 2.9, 2.8, 3, 3.1, so we say approximately 3%. And so your income has to always be growing at a rate that is equal to or greater than the rate of inflation so that you can buy the same amount of things with your dollars. When your income does not grow at a rate that is equal to or greater than the rate of inflation, then you cannot buy the same amount of things with your dollar or dollars. You have lost purchasing power in that scenario. And that's why myself and everyone that is on my financial team, this is why we take the position that income building is more important than savings per se. We teach that savings are to be used to augment your income, but not to be used to replace your income with respect to retirement. You need income until you die and you need income that adjusts for the rate of inflation so that you do not lose purchasing power over time. Now, let's break this down. So in this illustration, we have $50 and we have a bowl of hemp seeds. And I hope that the wise can pick up on the fact that I'm also promoting in this uh, particular illustration, healthy eating, because at the end of the day, you know, your health is your wealth. And it does not make sense to uh, acquire or attempt to acquire a whole lot of money at the expense of your health. You know, the purpose of, of obtaining the dollars is so that it can give you a better quality of life. So uh, health is your greatest wealth. And I'll, uh, you know, at some future point in time, I, I may uh, do a lesson uh, on, on that. So in this illustration, $50 today can purchase six bowls of hemp seeds. Now, and let's fast forward three years into the future, that same $50 as a result of inflation can now only purchase four bowls of hemp seeds. This is because purchasing or inflation reduces purchasing power. So if you wanted to purchase that same six bowls of hemp seeds three years prior, you would need more than $50 because the cost of those hemp seeds has increased as a result of inflation. And, and again, you know, there, there are several tutorials online that talk about uh, the causes of inflation. But in this particular uh, lesson, I wanted to hone in on the impact or the effects of inflation in a way that would give the beginner a thorough understanding of its impact. And that's what we're doing today in this lesson is we are doing a little bit more of a deep dive on its impact for the everyday person's life. You know, in your everyday life, 
and the things that we do in our everyday life, we're looking at the impact of it. So I like to use hemp seeds um, because I like to use food. And I think that food, in terms of explaining inflation, food is one of the best examples that I can think of that explains the impact of inflation because we all have to eat. So let's go to the historical food timeline. Let me take this back up here. And I'll, you can find these links uh, in the description uh, in, the de in the description below so you can go through them uh, in your own time. So let's use McDonald's hamburgers. As you see, it's highlighted. Uh, I frequently use this particular tool as a, as a learning tool when I teach uh, di different classes on inflation and finance. So let's look at the McDonald's hamburger. And this historical uh, food, food timeline starts at, let me, let me be exact, we're covering, uh, we are covering from uh, 18, 18, 1825 in some cases, uh, depending on what the particular food item, food or drink item is, uh, gives us the uh, historical record on when we are starting. And oh, here we go right here. The US retail food prices from 1600 to present, and this ended somewhere around uh, 2007, 2008 uh, for, for some of these food items and some of these food items actually go up to the year 2014. So let's go to go back to McDonald's hamburgers and we see that in 1955, a McDonald's hamburger was only 15 cents. We come down the timeline as you see to 19, uh, 1990, we went from 15 cents to 75 cents per hamburger. And that's inflation that's causing this. Now, I will give McDonald's credit that McDonald's, um, they do do a great job at suppressing prices as best as they can uh, during times of inflation. Um, you know, and even during times of recession. And those of you that lived through the recession of 2008, uh, for many people, McDonald's was a safe haven, you know, in terms of, of being able to uh, afford, go to a restaurant that you could afford to purchase food, uh, food from. So uh, I can't, you know, I, I, I don't slam McDonald's, but, but, but too much, you know. <laughs> so uh, in 1984, we went to 50 cents. 1990, 75 cents, 1991, 79 cents. So you see the progression of prices. Now, in some cases, like we have here in 2000 and 2007, um, 89 cents, um, the value of the ham, well, the cost of the hamburger stayed the same. Now, sometimes the government will step in and there's a particular action that is being made um, to help to suppress prices um, at certain points in time. I said sometimes, you know, every time they will at some point, but they are sometimes when they'll do something in particular, they'll take certain actions that will allow certain entities um, to suppress prices some so that the price doesn't go, you know, too high when the country is experiencing like now in 2022, hyperinflation or experiencing a severe um, recession. So let's see what that um, what McDonald's hamburgers have gone to now. So in 2007, 89 cents, and today, according to McDonald's uh, menu, you see we are hamburgers are two dollars and forty nine cents right here. Two dollars and forty nine cents. So we started at fifteen cents. And now we are at $2.49. That's inflation. Now, let's take another look at this. Let's look at, uh, this is a comparison of prices over the last 90 years. The average cost of a new home, 1930 was $3,845. 1940, $3,920. 1950. 8,000, 1960, 12,000, 700 dollars. This is before my time, but my time, we're coming around the 80s and the 90s. 
you know, during my time of, 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 grow, of growing up and, and, and getting into uh, having, starting to become more conscious about dollars and everything. So let's just start here in 1990. In 1990, the average cost of a, of a, of a brand new home was $123,000. In 2018, $3,885,000. So you see, we've gone from 1990 to 2018, $123,000 to now nearly $400,000. And in 2022, it is approximately 400 and some thousand dollars. You, you know, to get into a, uh, to buy a brand new home now, a uh, town home, a new custom, I mean, a new build, that's what you, you're, you know, low 300s, $400,000 is where the cost is. So, and we're going to go one more step deeper after this uh, page here. Let's look at average wages. So the average wage in 1990 was $28,000. We round that out and say $30,000. In 2018, the average wage is $52,000. $52,145.80. Now, what that means is this. I want to explain this because this is, is important. There are some people who make $30,000 a year. So that means that if you're making $30,000 a year in 2022, or, or, or in this example, uh, uh, 2018, then that means that, um, or $30,000 30, $30, uh, now, you have the purchasing power of someone from 1990. So this is why it is important to have income that adjusts for the rate of inflation. So using this as an example, again, depending upon where you are in, in the country, you know, $30,000 may buy a little bit more, but on average, you don't have the same amount of purchasing power today that someone had in 1990 making $30,000. So that means that you won't be able to buy with $30,000 a year. Let's say in our uh, early example, when we uh, op opened the lesson up about how $50 would purchase six bowls of hemp seeds. Your $30,000 is not gonna allow you a year to purchase quote unquote, those six bowls of hemp seeds. You may only be able to purchase two bowls of hemp seeds. So it's very important that you be focused and be intentional about building income and building income or guaranteed income until death. You need income until you die. About building income that adjusts for inflation over time. So, you know, you know that's those two numbers right there as we look at this comparison between 1990 and 2018, there's a lot involved in that. There's a lot involved in that. Um, but again, you know, you don't want to have income in, in, in 2022 that's equivalent to the purchasing power of income from 1990, 1980, or, or, or 1934, you know, that matter. You have to have income that constantly adjusts for the rate of inflation over time so that you can have the equivalent purchasing power of those from previous times. The average cost of, of a new car, you, you know, uh, in 1990 was $16,950. 2018, 35742 And right now, depending on the car that you get, you may be about $40,000, $40, you know, 37, $37,000, around $37,000, $37,040,000 on average. And as you see the forecast that they have in each one of these, you know, a forecast of approximately 2.5%, 5.4%. But again, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get too much into those forecasts because we are experiencing hyperinflation. The price will um, fall, you know, as things begin to, to stabilize and we are experiencing hyperinflation predominantly as a result of the pandemic that we are currently going through. So as we close out here, uh, I want to do this. So this is an inflation calculator. 
And this allows you to see how much purchasing power you would uh, need in today's time from a previous time. So let's use $100. $100 in 1990. Now, this is also a good tool to use because it's a reference for allowing you to see uh, how much income you need to have, you know, and what you need to be about the business of doing in terms of generating income. Let's calculate. So you see that uh, you would need today, you would need $219.97 to have the same purchasing power of $100 in 1990. So that's $119.97 more. So that's almost, you know, a hundred, I had to say it again, what $100 in 1990 could purchase, the purchasing power of $100 in 1990, today you would need $219.97. <laughs> Let me explain this right here. It says this may not be the best answer because this is based upon the consumer price index and the consumer price index uh, changes on a daily basis. And as you see here, as the, the note, um, the numbers used in this uh, comparator are updated every night. The latest value for the CPI was published by the BLS on April 12, 2022. So again, this is uh, used as a reference to give you a, 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 you know, a general idea of how purchasing power has changed over time. So let's do one more and then we'll close this out. So let's say, let's look at, let's do a little bit closer of time. Let's go 2010 and let's calculate $1,000. So what $1,000 could buy in 12, 12 years ago can now uh, I mean, now you would need to have $1,318.49. So you would need to have an additional $318.49 to have the same purchasing power of $1,000 in 2010. So again, this is why, you know, myself and my team, we are hard on income building. You use savings to augment income. You do not use savings to replace income. When we talk about retirement and, and all the lessons and, and things that we discuss as we do financial planning for people, you know, many people are under the conception that if they save up enough money, they'll be okay. And to a certain extent, okay, but if there's, if you don't have enough income to cover your cost of living, for the quality of life that you want, and you think that your savings is going to cover all of that until you die, you may experience what is called the income gap. We don't know exactly when you're going to die. So if your income, if you don't have income or guaranteed income is coming in until you die, that's going to adjust for the rate of inflation and cover your expenses, then your savings is going to run out. You run the risk of running out of money or outliving your money. And with savings, we can calculate almost to the exact day with exact precision almost on when you're going to run out of money if that's your approach. So this is why we take the approach of income building. And we'll cover more of that on other videos. I thank you for your time. If you found value in today's lesson, like, subscribe and share our channel. Thank you again for your time. We are complete.